Hi and welcome. This is like Ipia Health Service, Doctor's Corner. Uh, remember, this is a platform where we are bringing to you issues of concern about our health. Last week, we focused on the uh, vaccination process and why it's important that we get vaccinated. Today, I want us to still maintain the same line on conversa of conversation that we had last time. As we talk about COVID-19, it's been a year and a half of our life being what we've uh, We've been referring to new normal, but I don't think it's new normal anymore. Currently, it's the normal that we have adapted to. And uh, I want us to approach it from, not from the point of statistics, because we've been given information here and there that these are the people who have contracted the disease today, and just that. Today, I want us to look at it from the point of, it's okay, I have contacted this disease. What is the cost of medication? What is the cost of treatment? And even after I have been treated, does a person get to get back to um, to their former state of health? Especially those who get critically ill. There are those who get sick and it's not that serious. But those who get critically ill, what does that mean uh, to them um, in the ongoing days of their lives? So welcome on board. I have a guest with me. He is going to introduce himself, tell us who he is and what he does. Welcome and thank you. My name is George Masharia. Uh, I am the County Disease Surveillance Coordinator uh, for the Lakeipia Health Services. Now, my main job uh, is to look at diseases, how they are spreading, uh, be able to uh, forecast when we may have an upsurge or an outbreak and also be able to advise uh, the department on what needs to be put into place to control and contain uh, any outbreaks that may occur. It also includes uh, uh, the events of public health uh, concern. So when we have uh, uh, flooding, uh, my unit is also involved in the response activities. Uh, basically, that is what uh, I do for uh, the Lekipia Health Service. I want us to look at, say, treatment. Every day we see the Ministry of Health releasing data of these people have contracted the disease today and such. So what does that mean to a common Mwanaichi who falls into that statistic? Uh, now, let me first uh, start by explaining uh, just something small and, uh, you know, the way the populations are affected. We've seen that uh, COVID is very uh, soft on uh, children and young adults, but it's a little rough uh, on people who are aging and have comorbidities. Now, the unfortunate scenario is that we have the young people who have become the spreaders. These are the people who are infecting uh, the old people at home, which uh, are their parents, their grandmothers, their aunts. And uh, these are people who have special needs. I most probably find uh, as people age, the body becomes a little weak. So these are people who require to be protected. And these are the people who are contracting uh, COVID and moving to severe illnesses. Now, uh, if you got sick and you were admitted in a general isolation ward, the average cost uh, of treatment in a day is around 15 to 20,000 shillings a day, which is uh, not something that everyone can be able to afford. If you are unfortunate and you are moved from the general isolation ward and you moved to the critical care unit, that's the ICU, that cost catapults to around 50 to 60,000 shillings per day. Uh, that is in our ICU. It goes higher if you are referred from uh, our critical care unit and you are sent probably to now the specialized hospitals like the KUTRH, uh, Kenyatta, uh, the cost is averagely 100,000 if you get to get there, which is very expensive. That is 100,000 per day? Per day, yes. So, but then when you look at uh, how to control and avoid uh, contracting COVID, it's actually much way cheaper because you're only required to have a face mask, uh, say two per day, 
uh, masks are now available, even the surgical masks, at a low cost of around 5 to 10 shillings. So that's around 20 shillings. And then on social distancing, there's no cost. Hand washing, uh, probably soap, another 5 shillings. So averagely around 20 shillings per day. So if you compare those to the cost of prevention and treatment, I would rather that people invest more on the preventive measures, which are easy to adopt, uh, because we are not asking people to do weird things, we're just asking you to maintain high hand hygiene, facial hygiene, uh, practice social distancing, avoid going into places where people are crowding, because uh, it's evident uh, from the research that is ongoing where people congregate, uh, COVID spreads very fast. So those basic things, if everybody was able to observe that, we'd be able to protect, especially that population that when they get COVID, easily move into severe. And most some of uh, sometimes uh, we have loss of life. Uh, we also have patients who come and take longer a long time to, to, to recover, uh, a situation we are calling uh, long COVID. Uh, the tri detrimental effects of long COVID is that uh, it affects your internal organs, uh, the working mechanisms of the body, and you may never fully recover from that. So uh, that is why we are urging uh, every Lycopian to be very careful. Let's avoid contracting COVID because even if it does not affect you, you could uh, end up uh, 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 pushing it into to, to, to a person who will get uh, severe COVID and probably even die. Thank you. Now let's move to disease burden in the county. Uh, we see reports being given every day about uh, how many people have been tested and how many have turned positive. So what has been the trend here in Lakeipia? Uh, one, we've had a few challenges over testing. Uh, this is uh, not unique to our county. This is a, a problem that uh, has been uh, unique to the country and say the world. COVID is still a new diseases. So uh, even the consumables, the testing kits, uh, sometimes they are not uh, uh, enough for every facility for every county. Uh, this is uh, something common, like uh, if you remember when India had a problem, they could, be, they could not even be able to test the whole population, could not even be able to vaccinate the whole population, yet they are producers of the testing kits, they are producers of the vaccine. So I can say it was a problem that affected uh, the whole uh, uh, world. But specific to our county, we have wanted to like, be able to test everybody like max ma mass testing uh, for the population so that we are really able to tell <coughs> the actual scenario on the ground but this has not been possible uh, now not every health facility within the county has been able to uh, roll out the testing but in the facilities where we have been uh, having the testing uh, we've noted when we have had the upsurge what is referred as a waves uh, the, the, the number of people who come uh, and test positive has been quite high. Uh, for this uh, very well, we have had quite a high positivity rate uh, of once a high of 60%, but it's going down at the moment we are around uh, 25%, and uh, we hope that this uh, sh shall continue going down. But uh, all I can say is that we still think that we have a lot of widespread community transmission ongoing. We are not able to check that well, but uh, looking at uh, our mobility data, we think that uh, we could have, be having a lot of, uh, you know, and not undetected, but uh, uh, really undocumented uh, transmission ongoing in the communities. Yes. You, you've spoken on, would like to know what wave are we in and are we looking probably say to a facing out of this wave and what are we to expect thereafter? Uh, yes, we 
actually on the fourth wave of this pandemic. And uh, we've gone through the first, the second, third and fourth waves. Now, what is a wave? Let me try and uh, explain in very simple words. A wave, as we, when we have a pandemic, is an upsurge on the number of new infections before the disease has been uh, controlled. Now, what causes this? Most of it is actually about uh, human behavior. Uh, you realize when we had uh, that wave and uh, we had flattened the curve, uh, uh, the, our, our, our citizens uh, kind of dropped guard, stopped uh, donning masks, uh, uh, started uh, going into social places, uh, so no social distancing being observed. People like uh, stopped doing the hand washing. Um, what, the, uh, what that meant was that we started getting uh, some increasing infections because we still have uh, susceptible populations within their community. And that is why we again had uh, an upsurge in the number of cases. Now, at the moment, we seem to be flattening the curve. But uh, if people do not continue observing uh, the, the containment measures, believe you me, we may have a possible fifth wave. So it's uh, incumbent upon every citizen of Laikipia to take charge of their lives, uh, continue donning masks, uh, continue observing social distancing, hand hygiene, and most importantly, uh, to come out and get the vaccination. So, um, as per the data released every day, death seem to be on the higher side on men, like COVID is hitting hard on men. Is there a thing that you can attribute to that? More prevalent? Actually, it's not just deaths. Even the number of cases, men are more affected than females by COVID-19. And uh, some of the reasons that we've been postulating on are uh, number one, the behavioral habits of men versus uh, 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 those of females. So we, when you're talking about social distancing, who is more likely to be breaking the social distancing? So men, you will uh, find them after work, they must go and uh, kind of socialize one, of, one for the road before they go home. Um, uh, their spouses who will have left work and gone straight home. So you'll find that men are exposing themselves more than the women. Uh, if you look at our populations, issues like smoking, how many uh, men smoke? They're more than the women. Smoking is one of the factors that will affect issues breathing. And so when you get COVID, chances that uh, you'll move to severe disease and probable death also become higher. We also look at uh, the feeding habits of, uh, of men. Uh, you realize, I have taken one for the road, probably we've shared a Kakwata Choma. When I come to the house and it's just Gideri, I will skip it. Yes? And therefore, uh, these are some of the things that uh, make men uh, be more susceptible to the disease. How does COVID compare? in the three sub-counties. Mm -hmm. Are there areas that it's more prevalent? Are there areas that have remained kind of strong? Uh, looking at uh, the three sub-counties that we have in the county, I think the hardest hit has been like Ipia West, around Iguamete Ward. Uh, second was like Ipia East. And uh, for some reason, uh, COVID has not uh, uh, spread so much in Lekipia North. Uh, could be due to many factors. COVID does so well in very cold, uh, cooler uh, uh, tem uh, temperatures, which is not what Lekipia North is. So we think that one factor plus uh, uh, the population there uh, is uh, a population that has been uh, exposed 
to the coronaviruses. Remember, coronaviruses uh, are many, so we think that may also have given them some some form of uh, immunity. Uh, the community is also known to use uh, herbal remedies, and we also think that may be a contributing factor to why probably they've been spared by the, the pandemic. But now, when you look at Nyahururu, this is a place that is also very cold, and uh, the people there, when you look at our statistics, uh, most of them have underlying uh, medical conditions, uh, similar to what may be happening in Lakipia East. But in Nyahururu, issues of diabetes, uh, cancers, uh, uh, the pneumonias are still very high. Uh, the, also, the, the age population is also quite big in the two areas, Lekipia West and Lekipia North. Uh, with, um, uh, sorry, Lekipia East, and we think those may be some of the factors why the two sub-counties uh, were affected that much. Okay. Yes. So we are winding up, and probably I, I want to give you this chance to speak to something that you feel is relevant and people out there should be informed about. Yes. Uh, I really want to focus on uh, COVID-19 vaccination. Uh, this is what is going to help us control this pandemic. And I really want to urge everyone uh, to present themselves for vaccination. It's a good thing that the government has invested heavily on vaccination for COVID-19. And uh, it's only when we achieve a good herd immunity that we will be able to say now we protected almost everybody and the disease shall come down because there'll be no more people for it to infect. Yes. Okay, Thank you. okay there you have it. You've had uh, what COVID is all about, matters treatment. Um, we are talking about from say 100,000 shillings to 1 million, really. Um, I don't want to say if you don't have that money, you take care of yourself. Truth is, even if you have that money, take care of yourself because we've had there are other adverse effects of COVID in our body. And uh, our health, like if a health service, every outlet out there, we are there giving vaccinations, giving guidance and information on how to cope with the new normal or how to protect ourselves. So really no one has an excuse. Let us be our own keepers and also be our brother's keeper by doing the right thing. Wear your mask if you're going out, wash your hands and sanitize. And above all, let's avoid social gathering because that is where we are picking it from and taking it home and affecting people who have been very keen on protecting themselves. But because of our recklessness, especially for young people, we end up exposing them to this disease. That is it for this week's edition of Doctor's Corner. We meet next week for another episode. Thank you. This is Lakitia Health Service.